If you have a carbonyl ligand, which is bridging between more than one transition metal centre, then it will have lower frequency because it's experiencing more back bonding. But if you have a carbonyl ligand bonded to a transition metal centre, essentially you can vary the amount of back bonding from a single transition metal centre. So the more electron density on your transition metal centre, the more back bonding actually occurs. Okay? Now, how can we increase the amount of electron density on a transition metal centre? Electron donating ligands. If you have a ligand that can donate electron density very strongly, so for example a phosphine ligand, a trialkyl phosphine ligand is a very good electron donor and that will boost electron density on the metal centre. And if you boost electron density on the metal centre, then you have more electron density available for back bonding to the other CO ligands, and they will reduce in frequency. What happens in the case of a TP star ligand? So what happens when you go from molybdenum hexacarbonyl to tris parazolol barato molybdenum tricarbonyl? What happens to the stretching frequency of the CO? It decreases. Why does it decrease? It decreases because a TP ligand is a better electron donor than a carbonyl ligand and the species is negatively charged, although that negatively charge is largely centred on the boron. Now remember, if you've got a certain amount of electron density on the transition metal centre, the more CO ligands you have, the more that electron density is shared out. So you expect to see lower frequencies in tetracarbonyl complexes than you see in pentacarbonyl complexes than you see in hexacarbonyl complexes because it's the same amount of electron density shared out amongst different numbers of carbon monoxide. Okay, now if you go back to your molecular orbital diagram, if you take carbon monoxide and you coordinate carbon monoxide to a Lewis acid that cannot do back bonding. So if you take a Lewis acid that cannot do back bonding, i.e. not a transition metal Lewis acid, so if you take borane, BH3, that's a very simple Lewis acid, it can't do back bonding, so all it does is remove the lone pair. Now, do you remember where that lone pair was in our molecular orbital scheme? It had antibody, it was the S sigma star orbital. So it has antibonding character, weak antibonding character, but antibonding character with respect to the carbon-oxygen triple bond. So if you remove that lone pair of electrons, you actually make the triple bond stronger you actually make the carbon-oxygen bond stronger in that case. Now, if you go to a transition metal, of course, in the case of a transition metal, you are getting back bonding in these systems. So if we look at a table like this, here you have nickel tetracarbonyl, you have cobalt tetracarbonyl anion, and you have iron tetracarbonyl dianion. What's happening to the stretching frequency? The stretching frequency is decreasing. Why does the stretching frequency decrease? So why does the stretching frequency decrease? The stretching frequency decreases because the electron density on the metal is increasing. This is neutral, this is a monoanion, this is a dianion. Electron density is increasing. If electron density is increasing, there's more scope for back bonding. If there's more back bonding, there's more occupation of the pi star antibonding orbitals. If there's more occupation of the pi star antibonding orbitals, there's a weaker carbon oxygen stretch. Carbon oxygen stretching frequency will go down. That's the logical cause and effect argument that I want everybody to espouse, to be able to go from electron density on the metal to stretching frequency in the carbon monoxide. Uh, region of the IR spectrum. And here's another very similar study here. This time we're starting with something that is positively charged, and this has the highest stretching frequency. As the, as the thing becomes more electron rich, the stretching frequency goes down, exactly the trend that we want to find. And as someone very rightly said, as we look at other ligands in this system, we'll find that you can trans you can exchange carbonyl ligands for other more electron-rich ligands and have the same effect, essentially, as putting a negative charge on the complex. What you're doing is you're increasing the electron density in the system.